Look, we get it. Preseason week two, you don't get to see every game. You don't know what happened everywhere, but there's a lot of important stuff going on. You want to listen to the episode with the preseason power up from the fantasy footballers. Check it out. Stay tuned. In a world where the line between success and failure can be measured in fractions of a point, three gentlemen, nay, heroes, have put aside their differences to combine forces and produce the greatest fantasy football draft kit of all time. From the creative minds behind the fantasy footballers comes a blockbuster multimedia extravaganza. Video profiles, stat projections, tier breakdowns, printable cheat sheets, rookie rankings, sleepers, busts, and so much more. Mike Wright calls it the one draft tool you can't miss. Andrew Holloway says it's changed his life. And Jason Moore said, when I saw all the content in the Ultimate Draft Kit, I fell to my knees and wept. I wept like a baby. Don't miss this opportunity. Go to www.ultimatedraftkit.com today and secure your copy today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. You were so far away. Welcome in. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Was that what it was like, Mike? Yeah, there was no oomph. I need the power. I got to feel it in my bones. I've been told I... Welcome. I've been... We don't need Batman. (laughs) That was so gross, Jason. (laughs) You're clearing your throat? Who's Jason? That's, you're not Batman. You're like Batman. creepy disgusto man. Well, one and the same. It's uh, me, disgusto some, man. Sometimes people say I frighten them on the road. So I have to start. I start back here so, and wait. I bring it in so that way they have a warning. The Like the whole intro music announcer saying the fantasy football is starting, that's not enough. It's not what scares them. What scares them <laughs> is when I yell at them. Mike, like, he's he's done this six hundred times, but I still don't. I expect don't know. It. See, I, I think hey. Andy's getting it wrong. I think he thinks he's startling people. What people are scared about is because he's the dad. Mm. They're 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 worried that they're in trouble. Uh, they gotcha. hear his voice and yes. they're like, "Oh no, what I do?" Psychological impact. Yes. Yeah. Uh, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Back with you again, Friday, August sixteenth. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. You notice there's no Kyler jersey on the back wall today. Oh, <laughs> what? We, we pulled it down? Well, that's not going to be his debut. We're not giving him the wall debut of that jersey after what happened last night. Yeah, sweatpants are firmly on. All there right. was there was no... no I got you. Yeah, I just you. know that most people out there, knowing we're Arizona fans, they, they're turning their podcast app on and they're saying, what are these guys going to say about what happened last night? All right. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. They're probably not going to go 18-0 this year. I, for the first time, uh, I, I think I'm willing to admit 18-0. Save it for the quick question. Is out of the cards. Yeah, we're going to talk about the five preseason games, some takeaways from last night. We've got uh, draft questions. We have mailbag on the show today. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We appreciate you rating, reviewing the show, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, ad free on Stitcher Premium, pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. We appreciate you coming along for the ride in 2019. A lot of exciting stuff going on. Did a uh, foot cast yesterday, a little bonus episode for the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com, which is also where you can enter the Megalobowl tournament. There are now, I mean, there are more than 2,000 of them. Oh, it's going to be intense. 2,000 people plus competing for the Megalobowl title. 
Which, Jason, you do have my permission to be disgusted, oh man, with, Mega. with the Megalobol. Megalobol. <laughs> so, yes, jointhefoot.com to go and enter. Why is that a shark's voice? Well, I mean, what do you think? It's going to be like, hey, it's Megalobol. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a shark. Watch no, out. But I, we've all seen Finding Nemo. Sharks are Australian. Oh, all right. I I don't do a good Australian yeah, accent I when say, I go in my low voice. Way to set him up for oh, that good one. Good night. It's the Megalobo. <laughs> oh, good eye. It's the Megalobo. See, there we go. Now it's a friendly. Get bat- in my tournament. <laughs> Megalobo. You sound like the guy from The Boys. Hey, I just got an update. Uh, That's what you sound 1800 like. 1,800 of the 2,000 have dropped out of the Megalobo <laughs> just now. So the competition, not as Oh, stiff. crikey. <laughs> All right. Um. Mike, you couldn't help yourself. You knew we were talking about the preseason, so you grabbed your <laughs> we've, axe. We've never done a drop for any preseason talk, and I was like, we, sh- we should probably have something. Don't don't even worry about what's happening. Just, just, yeah. just push the button. When I showed up today, he, he this was in our uh, Slack channel, and I'm like, what what segment is this? <laughs> what, what are we doing? But uh, we have a segment. Preseason Power Up. I could, I could weep. Mike just wants me to play it all day. So, first of all, you invented this segment name. Yep. Second of all, you've worked power into it so you could then now make a goofy movie power line drop. How dare you? How dare <laughs> totally you? Totally original Ac- work. <laughs> Accuse me. Um, it was impressive. Let's talk about the preseason You want to play it again? <sighs> yeah! Preseason power up. Thank you, Mike. Very Look, impressive. I'm just trying to make sure we all see eye to eye on the preseason. <sighs> I know that's a reference. All right. The Raiders defeated the Cardinals 33-26. to We've got to see Josh Jacobs in this game. The Cardinals got flattened. Their offense stayed on the field for at least, I believe he had at least five drives. Kyler yes, Murray did. that is correct. Uh, I think he had three complete passes in five drives. He did throw for 12 yards. That is true. It was a rookieish performance from Kyler. It was a bad performance by the offensive line. It was a wonderful display of yellow. I've never mm. seen more penalties by one team in a smaller period of time. Uh, there was a first down called back on penalty. There was a third and one that turned into a third and 16. It was a, a rough performance for Kyler Murray, or as I like to call it, maybe a merciful stop to his infinite rise in average draft position for fantasy football owners. Okay. Maybe we can get some settling of that because you were getting to the point where you were going to draft Kyler Murray at the ceiling of uh, he has to perform to X, Y, and Z to be worth where he was being drafted. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you could see that, you know, he's obviously got the ability to run, to scramble, and he wasn't going past the line of scrimmage often. I think he did once where, you know – in a real game, he's going to pick up some yards on the ground, which is what you're hoping for. But the offensive line looked trash, and maybe some of that's the scheme. They're coming out vanilla. They're not showing their whole offense. But Mike, on the on the footcast yesterday, you brought up to me you you know you brought up the fact that one of the tips yesterday avoiding risk in the first round. We talked about how David Johnson last season had a new head coach, had a new quarterback, and there was risk. And you brought up the fact that hey, look, this year he's got a new head coach. He's got a new quarterback, and while those things seem better, an offensive head coach versus defenses, uh, defensive, the the number one pick in the draft that most people really are buying into right now, I think David Johnson does carry more risk than we have been seeing, especially with the display of that offensive line yesterday. It might, yeah, it could be a rough season between the tackles for David Johnson. You hope that the offense, obviously, yes. like you said, not showing a lot, involves him so heavily in the in the scheme. Um, and the de- here's here's another headline people need to be aware of in Arizona. The defense is in trouble. It has not shown up in two preseason games. Again, you're not showing everything you got, but Patrick Peterson is out for the first six games of the NFL season. Robert Alford, who was supposed to be the stabilizing force, last night broke his tibia. He's gone for the first half of the year. They're going to be starting the season with Trumaine, Trumaine Brock and a rookie – and it's going to be trouble. Yeah, and that's where I was going to transition to the fantasy side of this. If you're taking a late-round quarterback 
we we like guys that they have got a solid matchup week one and hopefully it turns into more. They play the Detroit Lions in week one. Carry on, number one, Carry oh, on yes. Johnson is is gonna go just a hamburglar on the Arizona Cardinals. But Matthew Stafford is also going to have a strong fantasy week one. So if if you're in your drafts and you are fully panicked because and no I, I didn't plan on everyone taking two quarterbacks no one's left Matthew Stafford will be sitting right there for you to scoop up play week one and then evaluate the quarterback position moving forward because he's Stafford's going to have a, a very solid game there would, are if be, you're deciding Big Ben right like oh I'm going to grab Big Ben super late and he's going right. to be my streamer well he plays New England in week one exactly so you might want to go Stafford I don't know yeah, I mean, if if you are streaming the position, not playing for the season, yeah. The one thing about the Patriots, though, that's really weird is while at the end of the year they always have a very good defense, uh, they 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 tend to get off to slow starts defensively. I, they I do. know the last few years they have. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this Ravens-Packers game. There wasn't a lot that you were going to be able to oh, glean. Josh, Josh Jacobs looked great, but he was also playing against the Cardinals defense. Josh Jacobs looked – it was neat to see him get uh, the first team work right out of the gate. You know what looked, else re looked really good? Was neat. It was his backup seemed to be DeAndre uh, DeAndre Washington. Washington, and I thought, oh, I want you know maybe maybe Doug Martin's not in this game. They're just giving him rest, and then Jalen Richard in came in, and then after that, Doug Martin got in the game. I was like, oh, okay, so Doug Martin is is. Getting I thought Doug Martin here. got got some reps before that. I just remember I him in so late after seeing all the other three backs. So maybe he got in uh, a time or two beforehand, but. It's going to be the Josh Jacobs show. Uh, so the Raiders' offense looked great. Cardinals' defense looked terrible. Jacobs looked good. Carr looked good in his limited work. And his two passes. Yeah, Baltimore, Green Bay. I talked yesterday about how I'd be watching this game for Lamar Jackson. What does he look like? The play of the night was one that didn't count, where he looked absolutely electric, took a ball uh, 25 yards into the end zone, breaking tackles, cutting up field. I realized I am the bad passer apologist of this podcast and have been for years. You're I, well, because um, Cam Newton for years, I've been saying what, what I, what I'm actually saying is that completion percentage doesn't matter that much for on fantasy, this show, for fantasy. And, and also it doesn't matter as much in the NFL. If you look at the success of Josh Allen, Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson, Six and one last year. Uh, Warren Sharp came out, tweeted this yesterday. Don't know if you saw it. Lamar Jackson in his rookie season, better yards per attempt, better passer rating than Andrew Luck, Jared Goff, Sam Darnold, Carson Wentz, Derek Carr, Nick Foles, Andy Dalton's rookie seasons. So there's more than meets the eye on a few errant passes is all I'm saying. But I do defend guys like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Cam Newton year after year because – uh, Trubisky. There, Trubisky, yes, because there's more than meets the eye in fantasy football. Lamar Jackson is an electric player on a good team. Now, a huge blow to that defense happened this past week. They lost one of their uh, – arguably their best cornerback. So what that says for their divisional chances, I mean, it's going to hurt, but I still love this team. So Lamar looked great. I thought Gus Edwards looked good. Justice Hill scored a touchdown. You love seeing the rookies come out. Um, Mark, Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards both just look like they're, they're such a good fit for this team. I mean, Mark Ingram didn't get a ton of work, but they're just, they looked powerful. The offensive line looks ready to run the ball. I, I, I was, you know, thinking I wanted to take another look at, uh, where I've got them static because both guys are pretty low in my rankings. Um, Green Bay didn't play Aaron Rodgers. Now, are you concerned about that? Because the expectation heading into the game was he would get a quarter of work, ended up sitting out due to back injury, uh, or a, I should back off of that. Yes. Not back injury, just what, back soreness, tightness? tightness. Back tightness. It, it sounds like a guy didn't want to play in preseason week two. Yeah, it, it doesn't bother me other than the fact that we can we, we still haven't been able to evaluate anything from the Packers offense. Yeah, you didn't get to see Aaron Jones. You didn't get to see anybody of, of real um, value on the offensive we'll side of the football. Week. So let's go to another game. Let's talk about the Jets. Let's yes. talk about Sam Darnold. Let's talk about the Jets-Falcons matchup. Where are you at with Sam Darnold in the, in the Rising. upside? Rising. He, like, 
I talked about it week one. Like, it was shocking to me how great Sam Darnold looked and that he was the highlight of this preseason. I want to see what – or of yesterday's slate of games. Sam Darnold did not disappoint. I mean, right out of the gate, he had two just pinpoint accurate throws, one to Quincy Noonwa and one a, a perfect uh, – threw it just a little bit short so Robbie Anderson could – get to the ball uh, off of his coverage. Then he completed it to Robbie near the goal line where he could have scored. Yes. Didn't. He and that was after a scramble play where the, the the offensive line let the guy through. He moved around and pinpoint accurate should have been a touchdown, but the, the wide receiver, I don't remember who was targeted, dropped it. Sam Darnold. I, I literally last night went and yeah, made a move, trade I'm off. I'm going to move him up. In Dynasty, I, I think in Dynasty, now's the time to trade for Sam Darnold before he breaks out. Right now, nobody's expecting something good this season. You know, he's ranked 25th and lower, but I, I think his future is bright. And you don't, you might not remember how young he is. Uh, so, I, you know, in Dynasty, I'm, I'm rising on Darnold. I think he has every opportunity to take a step forward. Haven't seen him on the field with Le'Veon Bell yet. Got to see right. a lot of Ty Montgomery last night. The, Looked pretty strong in yes. that complimentary role. I it's I know it's a crazy thing to say that that Montgomery will see any sort of snap share when Le'Veon Bell gets when they're in the regular season and Le'Veon Bell is playing. But I don't know. I just, I have I have those That's, slight concerns inside of me that I, Montgomery will be there more than than fantasy owners hope. You want to know what was? Impressive? I can't picture Le'Veon Bell with his helmet off on the sideline in any. Aspect I, of that's an important what I'm saying. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. Ty Montgomery looked pretty good, but what was surprising to me was how the Jets' offensive line looked. And I kept thinking, man, Le'Veon can run through this. Now, obviously, everything is vanilla. We're not going to overreact to preseason week two, but the offensive lines of this game were a big story to me because the Jets' offensive line looked good, and the Falcons' offensive line looked horrendous. I don't know if that was the Jets' defensive line just going complete smash mouth or what, but it felt like every single play Matt Ryan was either getting sacked or throwing backpedaling or whatnot, and I was really looking forward to the Falcons. This, on paper, should be one of their best offensive lines in years, so I that's going to be one of those things next week, week three, when it's like the real, I'm going to be watching the Falcons' offensive line because they looked horrific. Uh, Ito Smith took snaps ahead of Brian Hill in this game. Matt Ryan looked good to me. He did. Uh, made a couple of gr uh, impressive throws. And with some of the tumult at the quarterback position with uh, what you have to pay for certain guys, Andrew Luck's injury, Matt Ryan still firmly, strongly in my top five for fantasy. Any other takeaways that you want to bring up? Devonta Freeman played in the game. Mm -hmm. And then they got him out, and I loved it. All right, the Bengals took on the Redskins. Jason said before the show the Bengals tried to compete with the Cardinals for most penalties. It's true. Who won, Jason? Uh, I think the Cardinals won, but, I mean, the Bengals have to be embarrassed that they they put in a great effort and lost. Uh, I mean, the amount of offensive penalties they got called for was truly impressive. Adrian Peterson looked incredible. <laughs> he really did. He looked explosive. Why, why does this guy not age? You just kind of – again, this is preseason – Caveat is reaction, not overreaction. You're looking to to see eye test, not stat line. So when you get when you give the ball to Adrian Peterson for his first preseason carry and he breaks off a 26 yard run or whatever it was, and he shows explosion, he pulls away from guys. You say basically in the back of my head, well, look, he may break down by the end of the season, but he still got it right now. That's that's what's the perfect situation of why I love the value of Adrian Peterson later in your drafts. With Geist not being able to play, Peterson is – it's his ADP has just stayed there. I mean, he's stayed very, very low where he will be a usable guy for a, a running back two spot if you need him. And we don't expect him to be a stud throughout the entire season, but he'll have enough juice to be very productive early on in the season. And the, Washington eventually will try to give Geist the opportunity to take the job, but – at that point, you've already you've already gotten your fantasy football value from Adrian Peterson, and maybe you can trade him off before that, that before they try to make the change. Peterson has been a value in our ultimate draft kit since the day it released uh, on June first. So he's just going to be because of his age. It feels it'll bad. Be, it'll be static. He'll it, stay there as a value. It feels bad drafting Adrian Peterson. It, it felt bad last year. 
and it was there was even more assurance that he was going to be the starting running back. It's gonna feel bad. Just just plug the nose, do it. He's very valuable late in the draft. Uh, Joe Mixon, he only got one carry on the stat sheet. He had another one where he disintegrated Josh Norman, um, who you can find six feet beneath the yeah. turf after the stiff army gave him. Mixon looked explosive. He did. Um, he had a lot of bursts to him. You like seeing that. You still worry about Andy Dalton. Five for nine with, with an interception. Did not look good. Dwayne Haskins, seven for 14 with a touchdown through the 55-yarder in this game um, to uh, Davis. So ta other takeaways from this game, Are you do you get paranoid with Andy Dalton anytime something looks like this? Here's the, the, the question for Joe Mixon. Should you be worried about Andy Dalton and the offensive line, I mean, more so Andy Dalton? Also, Giovanni Bernard, is he's still there. He's still a – He's still a good backup running back. Is he going to be used more than he than he was last year? We're talking. This is a new, new, new regime in town, so you can't just fully say Joe Mixon is going to be the workhorse running back. Jr., what's your concern level with with Joe Mixon where he's going in drafts right now? Yeah, I'm I'm not concerned about Joe Joe Mixon when it comes to Giovanni Bernard. Okay, I, I'm actually the most concerned about Joe Mixon is the offensive line. I mean, you saw. Look, he is talented. He can do things that very few backs in the league can do, but it doesn't matter if they keep getting called back to holding or when they snap the ball, the defender is in his face. I think about two years ago when he had a three and a half yards per carry, he was the same dude. He was unbelievable in college, came out and was just inefficient because the line and the scheme didn't work for him. They figured out how to use him a little bit better last year. The offensive line was a little bit better. They've had major injuries this year on the offensive line. And so Joe Mixon, to me, is one of those guys that I think we bring up carry on, right? You're on a bad team. That's going to really hurt. How how many people from a bad team are going to be in the top 12? I worry about Mixon in that capacity. They seem to be working Gio in with that first team offense frequently. That, But then you're reminded of the fragility of Gio Bernard as well when he took a peripheral yeah. accidental shot. That from was a pretty big headshot, though. It was, but I'm just saying I'm, I'm calling. I'm not going to call him fragile for for getting shook by that. I've seen Gio Bernard go down like that more times than most running backs. He, it happens a lot to him, so it's a reminder that as much as you'd say you'd love to use him, I mean there were trade rumors surrounding Gio Bernard two weeks ago in Cincinnati. Goes down to a peripheral shot from Josh Norman. I do, I think that just illustrates the team's going to rely and lean on Joe Mixon not the often injured Gio Bernard. But we'll see what happens. Last game, Eagles, Jags. Huge takeaway for me was Miles, Miles Sanders starting yes. this game and looking like a running back one. It's happened quickly. You didn't know what the backfield was going to be. Maybe this is going to be – it is going to be detrimental to his average draft position for fantasy owners. We knew this was going to happen, so we said get him when you can. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably will not mean a rise – to the degree of David Montgomery before you draft, which means Miles Sanders is extremely valuable for your fantasy uh, team, in my opinion. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's going to be the later back. He's on a good offense. He's the. It looks like he's going to become the starter. You don't know what the split will be there with Jordan Howard, but the fact that he's in one of those murky situations, that's where people emerge from those. And I, I think that Doug Peterson is a good head coach. I think that the Eagles' offense is going to be great. And rookie running backs, as I shared yesterday, two and a quarter times per year, the, there are top 12 rookie running backs. So I'm taking a shot of miles for sure. Jordan Howard isn't going away. There was, I mean, in particular, off the top of my head, there was a third down play so where it was, it was very bizarre. I mean, they, they took Sanders out, put Howard in, and then had Howard leak out to be, to be the dump off check down, which. Whatever. I'm not the coach of the Eagles. It seems strange to me to go go with that over Miles. So my point is Howard's not going away. However, I have Montgomery and Miles Sanders ranked very close together, and at least as of a few days ago, the draft position was was pretty far apart. We're making Miles Sanders the much better value. If you look at um, NFFC high stakes drafting right now, over the last 24 hours, David Montgomery is on average 
the fourth pick of the fourth round. Miles Sanders is beyond. He's a six uh, six oh seven wow, six oh seven. He's back with Eckler Cohen. Man. So it'll rise for sure. But I look at those guys in the same lens, Mike. I think I think you've got a better offense in Philadelphia, no doubt about it. So if those guys have equal opportunity, Miles should be able to take more advantage of it. You also have less talent behind him. Jordan Howard is fine. Maybe he threatens the goal line a little bit, but Tariq Cohen is explosive and reliable. Yep. So I think it's an interesting situation. Any other quick takeaways before we jump into some mailbag? Only takeaway is Alfred Blue got injured, uh, hurt his ankle. It's not a huge injury, but it could be up to six weeks. So, I mean, that that wow. that gives a little bit more to the Leonard Fournette getting I'm, work. Yeah, and we're more excited about Jacksonville's offense than we were a couple months ago, too. So that's a good point. Uh, we're not going to get into any other news today. We want to thank Sleeper for sponsoring that segment. Check out the Sleeper app. You get up-to-date news, information, preseason injuries, all that stuff. Um, before we get into the mailbag, before we answer some big-time draft questions, like we're always talking about tiers, you know, mm -hmm. the ultimate draft kit. We've got our tiered rankings. Yeah. Let's talk about some tires. Oh, oh. GIers. <laughs> <laughs> Professional transition. Let's go ahead and thank today's sponsors. When is the last time you've thought about tires, Mike? Two seconds ago. <sighs> tires are what make the difference in how your car drives and feels. Since 1960, Discount Tire has been keeping customers safe by taking care of all your tire and wheel needs. With over 1,000 locations across 34 states, their main focus is your safety and the safety of everybody else on the road. They provide tire rotations. Discount Tire provides balancing, free flat repairs, free air checks, and more. And because safety is so important, they provide free tire safety inspections. Whether you need an air check or a set of wheels and tires, Discount Tire can help you get back on the road with peace of mind and change to spare. Visit DiscountTire.com to shop, research, and purchase your tires today. You can even make an appointment to skip the lines. That's DiscountTire.com. Discount Tire, they get you taken care of. Hey, speaking of safety, we want to bring a message from NHTSA. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. You could get in a crash, pe people could get hurt or killed. But here are some surprising statistics. Almost 29 people in the United States die every day in alcohol-impaired vehicle crashes. That's one person every 50 minutes. Even though drunk driving fatalities have fallen by a third in the last three decades, drunk driving crashes still claim more than 10,000 lives every year, and it can have a big impact on your wallet, too. You could get arrested and incur huge legal expenses. You could possibly even lose your job. So what can you do to prevent drunk driving? Plan a safe ride home before you start drinking designate a sober driver call a taxi a ride share it's easy nowadays if someone you know has been drinking take their keys and help arrange for them to get a sober ride home we all know the consequences of driving drunk but there's one thing for sure you're wrong if you think it's no big deal drive sober or get pulled over all right guys let's get into the mailbag 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 all right, if you have a question for the Fantasy Footballers, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button in the menu or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We'll get into some voicemail questions on the show today. Um, you can send us questions. We, we put a post up yesterday, so we got questions from Instagram, Facebook, social media, uh, and the website. Let's go ahead and start with the voicemail. Hey, Ballers, this is Joey from L.A., uh, I bought the UDK this year for the first time. Been listening to the show for a few years. Um, I wanted to know how to balance tier-based drafting and overall rankings. Because uh, if there's a big tier break and the next tier is a lot lower level running back, how do I balance that if there's a much higher ranked wide receiver and the overall ranking still available? Thanks. This is such a great question. I'm so happy we have this. Good job, Brooks, and good job, caller. Um <laughs> Look, we uh, if if you haven't been in the ultimate draft kit, we, so we've got our two, top two hundred. Everybody loves having a top two hundred rankings, and we've got a really important tutorial video that you can watch <laughs> where I tell you to print it out, crumple it up, and throw it away. 
Everyone wants the overall rankings. Everyone wants the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and the running backs all sorted in so that it's nice and easy because then you look and this guy's so much higher than that guy. So clearly he's the right pick. But this caller has is nailing the, the question of, okay, so how do I successfully draft in my draft? And it's not a matter of, well, I, there's, a, there's a tier two wide receiver, but a tier three running back, which tier is better. This is about roster construction. This is about when you're in your draft in your league, do you need two running backs and two wide receivers and a flex? Do you need three wide receivers? Do you have two flex? Is it two QB? When you draft tier-based, positionally separated, you're constructing your roster in a way where you go, I want to make sure whatever it is that works for your league, I want two stud running backs, and then I want to load up on wide receivers. Or I want to, you know, if I start wide receiver heavy, I'm going to need more running backs. How many quarterbacks are left in, in tiers that I like? It, it, look at each position totally separately from one another. And as you go, when you come onto the clock or you're close to, you know, when you're a couple picks away, look at your roster and say, what position do I need? Then go look at the tiers and decide independently. The top 200 lists, here's why they're bad. Because the difference when you sort all players in between a wide receiver and a running back that are 15 spots apart are possibly nothing. They're, you know what I mean? And so, But it's so enticing to say, this guy's so much higher, I've got to take him. Take the position that your team needs based on what you're seeing in the tiers. Yeah. Does that make it, sense? It makes perfect sense. And at the same time, I understand why, I mean, we get more requests for like getting the top 200 into the app and people want the top 200 for the exact reason people ask the question, please tell me what position to draft in each round of my draft. It's the same reason, right? You want to know, do I go running back, wide receiver, running back, running back, wide receiver, tight end, quarterback? You'd love to have a template like that. And sure, you can draft that way if you want to. It's just not the best way to draft. We want you to win. It's not optimal. In your league. So we're doing our best to help you. And I think that that's the 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 tier based separated position approach yeah and that and that's why we like we did not have a top 200 in the ultimate draft kit when we launched the ultimate draft on kit, principle like a couple of years ago on principle so that's why there's a disclaimer video in there so that jason can say what he just said to you again to reiterate we do have it though if you want it yes and you need to use oh, it the <laughs> ultimate draft kit has everything you need <laughs> all right on instagram jake has a question what's the earliest you would be willing to take todd Gurley in drafts Jake, I'm glad you asked this question because uh, we're getting a lot of different reports about Todd Gurley. Yesterday's yes. big report was Sean McVay has clocked Todd Gurley at 21 miles an hour in practice. Faster times than he's... Is he up there with a speed gun? It's amazing. What it's amazing. What is McVay doing? Um, and the thing is, that doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It really... Sure, it's great to hear that he can run 21 miles an hour in a straight line. Sure, that's neat. But all the reports have been that Gurley's looked really good in camp for weeks. McVay also came out and said, we also just don't know how the knee's going to respond when you're in a game. That's, that's, that's the, the problem. headline, right? That's the real headline. Yes, the problem with Gurley is not, is he a great player? Can he be explosive? Can he score a whole bunch of touchdowns? It's he has a, a, an arthritic knee that for fantasy purposes, feels like a ticking time bomb and you have no idea if it's going to hold up for 16 games. Is it going to hold up for two games? That's why there's huge amounts of risk for Todd Gurley. Having said that, where am I comfortable taking him? The back of the first round, the early second round. I would, I'm would, i still going to take the shot on, on Todd Gurley. I do believe that the Rams this season will take every opportunity they can to manage – that knee. So if, some teams don't get the luxury of doing that. I think they've afforded themselves that luxury with Malcolm Brown, bringing him back, drafting Daryl Henderson, and being a team that's generally in uh, having a large lead in a number of games. So I do think they'll just take advantage of the chance to not put him out there when they can. I agree with that. And so uh, that's part of the risk. Look, I'm thinking in my head about Marshawn Lynch years ago. When Marshawn Lynch was in Seattle, he had chronic issues with his back, and it was like, misses a couple days of practice, shows up on every injury report. More often than not, Lynch was fine, and you could play him. You still had it in the back of your head. 
I have no doubt Gurley will end up on more practice reports, oh. injury reports than you ever want. And people will play roulette on Sunday. The roulette on Sunday will be, do I play Daryl Henderson? Do I play Malcolm Brown this week because Gurley – is a little shaky. They took him out early last week. Do they not play him this week? That's going to be a lot of the question marks going around Ty Gurley. Yeah, and I, I, I hearken back to the top 10 tips and tricks episode where if I'm in the first round. All the way back to yesterday? All the way back. If I'm in the first round, I'm avoiding risk. The talent is there. The upside is there. I'm not saying Gurley's a bad, uh, a bad pick, but I am saying I'm not drafting him in my first round because I'm going to avoid risk. I'm just going to avoid the busts, whoever I get, if I avoid a bust, look, they're going to be good. Maybe they'll be uh, outscored by Gurley, you know, on the season. So for you, when you're if your your draft order pulls up and you're like, oh, okay, I'm in the back of the first round. More more often than not, you're going to end up with a top Dalvin, tier wide receiver, uh, or you're going to take well, Dalvin Cook. In the I would first. take Dalvin Cook over Todd Gurley uh, right now, and I would. I would. But I'm saying you're in the first round. Sure. Taking Dalvin Cook there would not be optimal for ADP. The back of the, uh, no, I I agree. But really, if you're at that turn, if you're near there, you're not going to get Dalvin Cook later. So it, it's where you have to take it. So for me, I'm probably ending up. I mean, we saw this in the Juju draft. We we ended up with two wide receivers. The wide receivers that are falling to that area in the draft, when you can get – if Hopkins falls or Adams falls, Julio, uh, yeah, I probably will take those guys over one of the running backs. I was going to say, in a lot of drafts, de my drive into work determines whether I'm taking Gurley or Cook. <laughs> if I had a real <laughs> – if I'm on the freeway and I had a quick stop behind somebody and it got a little scary – and I got a little risky. I take Cook that day. When I don't, when I have a smooth drive, I go Gurley because I'm feeling a little bit risky. When is, uh, when is that feature going into the UDK? <laughs> is that good professional advice? Yeah, it's how was Andy's drive today? The truth of the matter it's is a thumbs up or we a thumbs don't. Down. Yeah, yeah, we don't know how <laughs> active Gurley will be. That's the truth. Yep. we don't know. I'm glad that he's running at a high mile per hour. It's much faster than I can go. Uh, let's Should go ahead see him deliver a pizza. Oh my goodness! Um, let's if he could use one of those like bikes on the on the <laughs> field, that'd be neat. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into another voicemail question. Hey ballers, this is Veronica. Um, I'm in a ten team dynasty league. We've already done our draft, and it's two QB. I'm stuck with Lamar Jackson and Kirk Cousins. What kind of backup quarterback should I be picking up? Is it more like a Tannehill, or is it a deeper dive for a young player? Thanks. Well, good question, and I'm glad you brought up a two-quarterback league because that's where I feel like Sam Darnold's going to shine for you this year when you talk about an emerging type of talent. Someone's two, got him, though. Uh, he's, he's not around to pick up. No, not, for, not for her specifically. I was, uh, I was just saying, when you look at the upside of Sam Darnold, none of us are saying he's going to be a, a quarterback one. We're saying, hmm, there's, there's some upside. There's some improvement there. There's some, maybe I like him more than Mitch Trubisky there. So if you're in a two-quarterback league... You can take Darnold later than you can take some of those other players, so I, I was just sure. mentioning that. For uh, you specifically, I don't think you're in trouble with your wrong quarterbacks. No. I think you have great quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, you, you ideally you would want three, and maybe she just didn't say the other quarterbacks she might have on the roster if you're in a two-quarterback league. In a 10-team league, it's possible that even a starter like Fitzpatrick could be out there, probably rostered, but I would definitely pick him up if he's out there. I would handcuff Lamar Jackson. I mean, if you're in a dynasty, and to me, that is still Robert Griffin right now. Even with the yeah, because he he should be back early enough, and I don't. I'm not projecting that Lamar Jackson is getting injured week one, but I do think there's a good probability that he goes down. If he does, I think Robert Griffin could be fantasy relevant. So if you got a deep bench in a dynasty league, that's someone that I would look to have as well. Josh Rosen is another player that you can pay attention to when you're looking in the Ryan Tannehill, who might have an opportunity this year range. Uh, Rose is going to get his time. Yes. Because whatever you're going to get the bad Fitzpatrick game, and then you're going to get a shot with Rosen to see what he can do. And there's a good practice day for Rosen and a good practice day for Fitzpatrick right now, but you traded for him, and he'll get a chance. Uh, there's, a, there's a chance that Case Keenum is out there on the waiver wire. Um, Tannehill oh, in, in reality, too, by midseason. Yeah. Tannehill is not necessarily a bad pickup either. If you're talking deep dynasty, because – there's, there is a world where Tannehill or where Mariota, the 
plays himself out of a starting role by halfway through the season. And in a dynasty league, it's it's pretty easy to trade for a Philip Rivers, a Big right. Ben, a Tom Brady. So you can offer something, uh, you know, deeper on your bench or a future draft pick or something if if you do need a bolster. Marcus Mariota has not exactly been the pinnacle of health in True. recent yeah. years either. So last year, what Blaine Gabbert had a number of starts in that offense. Um, last year, the elbow nerve problems and the nerve contusions and the hamstring strains, these things are uh, risky business with Mariota. All right, let's go ahead and go to this question from Facebook from Josh. I know you guys aren't the biggest fans, but would love a show for tips on an auction draft. $200 budget, love the show, got my first championship last season. Nice. Couple things here. One, we've heard from a lot of auction uh, loving fantasy football players. Auction's great. Auction's fun. I can anticipate that next season we'll probably have more features for auction players in our ultimate draft kit because that's an area we want to to add more resources for you. One way we do that is with the website and the articles on the website. Even though auction's not mainstream predominant uh, compared to snake drafting. We do put a, a number of uh, a lot of work into the articles on the website, so I would check those out. Yeah, and and it's not that draft information is completely useless for you in auction because you're you're using ADP and and how we value these players to know like these are the these are the guys you're going to want to spend up on. Here are the players that are value, so I know that I can get them a little bit cheaper. So. It, but you're right. Auctions are – they are rising in popularity. And we do have auction values in the Ultimate Draft yes. Kit. It's just a matter of maybe we build some more customization out for you next year. Yeah, and I would throw out two tips. If you're nominating players, nominate players you don't necessarily like and try to get guys in the middle of a tier. It, ter it ter Usually if there's you know a big three, you're, whoever goes first is going to go for a lot of money because it's like, oh, it's a, it's a you know big name. Whoever's the last guy in that tier is also going to go for money because it's like, if I don't get him, yep. I miss out. So go for those middle players in each tier. They'll usually be the cheapest. All right. Uh, Instagram, what is your best advice when choosing a team name and picture from Luna mm -hmm. J? A pop culture mashup. Yeah, those are very nice. Those are fun. My my Ventura Bravehearts, and and I got the I got the logo of Ace Ventura with the, with the war paint on the face. Oh, it's so now, good. Now, when you do that... Mike, do you put Charlie from Mighty Ducks or do you put Banks from Mighty oh, Ducks? Oh, get All right. Bodied. So, yes. yes. So, we've we've brought it up. Yes. In my rush to get the analogy out there, which I was I was incorrect. I, mean, I was threw out the name of Charlie. It, it's clearly Adam Banks. Yeah, not Charlie Conway. Uh, good friend who loves Mighty Ducks. Where were you? Yeah, yeah. I was Andy. busy hosting the show, Mike. I, I don't know. You were host I was the one talking. <laughs> you were sitting there doing nothing. I'm I don't, off the hook because I've never seen it. And someone tweeted at me and said, dude, I was so disappointed in you, Jason, for getting that reference wrong. <laughs> like, oh, oh, this yeah. was right. <laughs> we may have received mailbag questions about that yeah. specifically. Un unfortunately, my house of cards is collapsing. I don't listen to you on the show, Mike. <laughs> I've never heard a word you've said to this point. And most of your pop culture references, they go over right over my old man head anyway. So... Um, let's just, let's grab another. I got it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every once in a while, you can get something wrong. What's up, guys? Holden from Indiana here. Big fan. Uh, my question is, which rushing quarterback wide receiver core has a more successful fantasy year, Buffalo or Baltimore? Thanks, guys. Uh, I think Buffalo. Yeah, I think Buffalo is the answer because you specified wide receiving core, and I think Mark Andrews is going to have a big role to play for Lamar Jackson as are as is Justice Hill Ingram out of the backfield so uh I do believe Buffalo adding John Brown Buffalo's got good wide receivers yes uh, yeah John Be Brown Beasles. the addition of John Brown is is great Robert Foster showed out at the end of last year and has already kind of showed up here in preseason as well so if it's just wide receivers we're not we're removing quarterback from that talk if it's I'll a dynasty league give me the Ravens wideouts Okay, I'll the, take the, the rookies. I'll, I'll take yeah. the Ravens crop in a Miles Boykin, Marquise Brown. Yes, in a uh, in a dynasty. League. Hollywood. Um, okay, we got time for another one. Uh, let's go. Now, do I need to pick one in particular, Brooks? That you said uh, ties in with with the Mighty Ducks someplace? Oh no, I was just letting you know. Multiple people wrote in about that. People were very upset. Yes. Yeah, I know. And I, where, you know where they weren't upset? 
Batilda Bagshot. Batilda Bagshot. Oh yeah. <laughs> they loved they loved them some Batilda Bagshot. Good old Batilda. I'm over here. 99 out of 100 pop culture references. I crush them. I don't hear from people then. Somebody said. Just want to kick a man when he's down. Well, they wanted to know, do we like Harry Potter too? Otherwise, Jason is now the the numero uno on their power rankings of the show. Oh, that's fine. I relinquish. I love Harry Potter, but I'm just. Not the, to Batilda Bagshot type no, of levels. I've seen the movies. <laughs> okay um brett brett carlson how many bench spots would you recommend for a 10 team league six mm. at least six yeah yeah was, I, I would do six and two flex yeah that was uh that was brooks's answer as well instagram full point per reception league kaylin Belage or peyton barber Ooh, Kalen Balage, yeah, and this is I'll coming the from the guy who has been so against Kalen Balage. I didn't like him coming out of college. Uh, you know, I I besmirched his name. Besmirched his name being behind Kenya Drake. I am starting to get very excited about the prospects of Kalen Balage. Look, he's just done everything that the team has wanted him to do. He's balled out. I saw some reporter talking about how the the defenders were asking who who's that guy because he was so tough all week in when they when they had the scrimmage against each other and they're like that was Balaj. So he's he's showing now. <laughs> you were saying his own teammates. No. Were, who's that guy? No, in inner inner uh inner team, team. Yeah. scrimmage. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. Balaj has more upside and Balaj yes. probably have three games this year where he gives you a 50 plus yard touchdown because that's just kind of yep. when, when he hits it's kind of like uh, what Latavius would have those plays for Oakland back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, all right, that's going to do it for today's show. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Once again, a George Kittle signed 49er mini helmet. Beckett witnessed yesterday $72.54 nice. on pristineauction.com. Use our registration code, BALLERS, when you sign up to browse and bid on autograph sports memorabilia, hundreds of daily auctions. We're not talking about waiting weeks to figure out if you won. Um, just go to Pristine Auction, get five bucks off your first purchase, pristineauction.com. That'll do it. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of the preseason games. We'll be back on Monday with more fantasy footballers goodness. Enjoy preseason football, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We have a reminder from our good friends at NHTSA. It's never okay to drive stoned. You put yourself and others in danger. And a DUI covers more than just alcohol. Drugs that make you feel different will make you drive different. And you could get a DUI. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI.